Hi students, welcome back to Geology. Today we are talking about the history of the Earth. So we're just doing a first little dive into how everything became what we see today. So first thing here, we're going to start with the origin of the solar system, and then we're going to look at the origin of the Earth and the Moon. And then we'll look at a quick overview of Earth's history, but we will have an entire module where we talk about geochronology and dating methods and how we know how old things are. All right, so first things first, what is the Big Bang Theory? No, it's not just a show. So here the Big Bang Theory describes the origin of the universe. The universe began expanding around 13.8 billion years ago which is a lot older than Earth, right? So things have been expanding for a very long time. And basically what this theory describes is that everything that we see today was formed in basically an instant. So we had a lot of material that was created from essentially nothing, a spark, if you will, and everything began expanding from there. Now, physicists and um, planetary geologists are constantly trying to recreate the Big Bang um, in their models and in their mathematical equations to try to further understand how this happens. Um, but this is our best explanation for the creation of the entire universe and then expansion from there. And as far as what we can tell from measuring the distance from Earth to other planetary bodies that we've observed in the night sky, the expansion is actually increasing at a higher rate than what we predict started at. So we see more expansion more recently and everything's getting further and further away from us. So then the next step in the creation of what we see today would be the creation of stars. So that includes our own star. And so stars started out as basically these elements that were just kind of floating around after the Big Bang. And they started spinning into these clouds of gas and dust known as nebulas which you may have heard of before. And this is described in the, the nebula hypothesis, um, in which the center of the disk would form this new star and the, it would take on the force of gravity and more and more material would collect until it became this much larger body. And there was a nuclear reaction where two or more nuclei in the center of atoms are forced together and combined to create a new larger atom. And so this fusion would take over and the star would grow. Um, unfortunately, stars are not permanent. So we have um, not actually observed, but estimated that stars have a finite lifetime and eventually will basically explode or collapse in on themselves. And that's sometimes how we get black holes. All right, and then going on to the formation of our solar system, this would have happened around the same time that the sun was forming. So when we have that nebular theory going on, we also see the solar system taking shape because as material is circulating and spinning, a lot of that is collecting in the center, which is why the sun accounts for 99% of the mass of the solar system. And all of the leftover particles end up orbiting that. And so that would be all of our planetary bodies, including our planets, our dwarf planets, all of that good stuff. And so the sun or the star of a solar system is at the center. And then everything that orbits that star or sun in a solar system is outward from that point. And we are not the center of our universe, right? We're not even the center of our galaxy. So we are in the Milky Way galaxy. We're not even the center of that. We're not the center of our solar system, our galaxy, our universe, none of that. There are billions of other solar systems out there. We are just one of them. And our solar system contains eight planets. So sad Pluto is not a planet anymore as of 2006, which was a few years ago. But um, the Astronomical Union said that Pluto was not the dominant body in its orbit. 
it falls within Neptune's orbit at two points in its rotation around the sun. So it's no longer a planet. It's now considered a dwarf planet. And so from order from the closest to the sun, furthest from the sun, we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Those four are inner planets and they are rocky. So they consist of rocks or some variation of rocks and they are more dense, which is why they're closer to the sun. And then as you move away, after Mars, you have the asteroid belt, and then we see Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Those four planets are gaseous, so they are formed much further from the sun because they are much less dense. And Neptune is really far out there. <laughs> the only reason it was discovered is because people were looking at Uranus and trying to look at its retrograde orbit, which means it rotates on its side. And they started noticing something else pulling on the orbit of Uranus, and they found Neptune. And then from there, they started finding even things further out, like Pluto, Aries. Um, those are all dwarf planets that are beyond the reaches of Neptune, so they're pretty far from the sun. All right, looking at the origin of Earth. Earth is 4.6 billion years old, and so is our solar system. And it also formed around the same time all of the other things in our solar system were forming. And this is just a mixture of gas and dust from the expansion of the Big Bang that started to coalesce. And a lot of other bodies would run into proto-Earth or, you know, pre-Earth before it was actually Earth. So there were a lot of impacts at this time. And then eventually it formed a very good spherical body and consisted of its own gravity. And so it started kind of making the sphere that we know today. All right, and then as everything starts cooling down is when we start to get the cool rocks and minerals that we'll talk about this semester. So we start to see the molten state of the earth as it starts to cool, things start to crystallize and rocks start to cool down. And so what we see is a lot of our um, rock forming minerals that we will talk about later forming at this time. And so we have lots of crystals and the crust starting to really take shape. Um, the crust won't fully develop until plate tectonics really kicks in. Uh, but this kind of early crust was probably very mafic in composition. So we're seeing really dark rocks, like the rocks you would see in Hawaii, which would be basalt. We see really high concentrations of iron and nickel because that's what comprises our core. And so as all of this starts to take shape, we start to see some of what we see today on Earth's crust take shape. And then around this same time also, something else ran into the earth. And as that something else, a much smaller body ran into the earth, which we call the great impact theory, it kind of bounced off earth and all of the pieces that were from the impact or the collision started to coalesce together in space. And then earth's gravity started to kind of pull them and it started rotating around earth. And that became our moon. And so all this text here just kind of goes over that. I have a lot of text here so that you can reference it as you're working. Um, but that's kind of the gist of how that works. And then where did the water come from? So Earth's water is kind of an anomaly. Um, obviously, in our solar system, we haven't seen water really on any other planet. There's been very small amounts found on Mars in some sediment. Um, but... Outside of that, as far as we know, there might be on one of the moons of Jupiter, there might be some frozen water. We don't know what that water looks like, if it's H2O or it's some other form. Um, but there's a couple of theories out there describing where Earth's water came from. Um, and those include volcanic gassing, oh, sorry, outgassing, comets, and meteorites. And so a volcanic outgassing, this would mean that during the formation of Earth, the water was already there. Um, so water did not come from an outside source in this instance because volcanic magma, so magma can contain about 1% of water vapor. And as soon as tectonics kicked in and volcanism kind of took over, 
um, the main geologic processes after Earth had cooled quite a bit. Maybe that's when the water started showing up and eventually accumulated enough that we have basically 70% of the Earth's surface covered in water. The other option could be space. So comets are a mixture of dust and ice. And so some of that ice being frozen water, it could have brought any, any impact of those comets could have brought that to the surface of the Earth. And then some meteorites that seem to be dry could also have some trapped water within the mineral structures. And so as that bombards Earth, it could have brought it to the surface. So although we don't necessarily know for sure where the water came from, um, we do know that it could have contrib been contributed from all of these different sources. So it could have been a combination of the three. And there's always more research in that area to try to figure out why we have so much water. Because if we didn't have this water, we wouldn't have life on Earth. And then some major events in Earth's history. These are really big events. So there's obviously a lot. Geologic time goes back 4.6 billion years. So a lot has happened since then. So 4.6 billion years ago, Earth forms, and then we have the Earth's crust and core form, and the oceans form. 3.8 billion years ago is when we saw first life. Then 1.5 billion years ago, oxygen began to accumulate in the atmosphere. And although that doesn't seem important right now, that is vital to having animals on land, right? So we wouldn't have terrestrial animals and plants if oxygen didn't accumulate in the atmosphere. And then 700 million years ago, we saw first animals evolve. First vertebrates, which were fish, was 530 million years ago. And then 400 million, you can see that gap, right? 400 million years ago is when we saw the first land plants evolve. And plants were on land before animals were. So 400 million years to 1.5 billion years, that's how long it took to get plants on land. It's a long time. And then 350 million years ago, we saw our vertebrates show up. So that's only 50 million years from when plants showed up. And so those vertebrates would have been eating the plants and each other. And then 225 million years ago, we saw dinosaurs evolve, which was huge. And they dominated the earth for a very long time, millions of years, until they went extinct during the mass extinction between the Cretaceous tertiary time period, 65 million years ago. And then modern humans evolved 130,000 years ago. So this is just a brief history. We'll go more into Earth's history as we move on, but this is just to kind of get you dive into the information. So just as a summary, the origin of the universe can be described by the Big Bang Theory. The origin of the solar system is demonstrated by the nebular um, hypothesis and the formation of stars. The Earth formed 4.6 billion years ago, around the same time as the solar system. Earth's water could be from comets, meteorites, or volcanic gassing, or a combination of all three. And there have been many events that have happened over the course of Earth's history, and we will continue to cover all of these topics in class. All right, I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Bye!